Hey everyone, well, this is it. Got the Mac on, changed oil, fuel filters, and uh, I changed hydraulic filters last year. But we're ready to go cut some canola. We're gonna go cut that 145 acre piece that uh, has uh, invigorant canola. It's a L243 or 241C, if I'm correct. Can't remember. Uh, it's one of the better drowned crops that I got. The other one is pretty much drowned all of it. But uh, this one's pretty thin, but it'll be something. So let's go. Well, we're off to uh, cut some canola here. Swat some canola. I uh, just finished cutting two fields. And I didn't get any footage because, I don't know, I just kind of forgot to do it. But I cut one over there and it's not too bad. It, well, it's still pretty shitty. But the one I just came off of was garbage. But I'm going to my third canola field now and it's not bad. It should be decent. At least there'll be swaths that the combine can pick up. So. 25 feet ahead or the thing this thing is offset I don't have to worry about it sticking out over the yellow line too much well here we are six miles seven miles down the road finally made it so this is my only decent canola crop so we're gonna knock her down Make a cup around, see how it is. So this part here, I just drove in. This part here is drowned. There's nothing, absolutely nothing. And what happened was uh, the ditch filled up with water here and spilled over and uh, kind of root this part for a ways. So uh, I'm gonna find out where that was and throw some dirt in there. As you can see, there is absolutely nothing. Some green canola that uh, came up later from the root. That's what happens when it drowns, it comes up later. So we'll wait till we're into some good stuff. Well, that's better. That's more normal. It's not the greatest right here, actually, but. But yeah, this is, we can't complain about this. There's a lot of hemp metal weed in here. That's the only thing that this Invigor uh, canola can't control it with the Liberty Spray. It's hemp metal. It's uh, around midnight and I'm still cutting and I can't complain about this crop here. He's uh, barely going through the hole. I'm going to make sure I'm at least a foot off the ground or else I'll start plugging. But uh, yeah, I'm uh, I think I'm going to shut her down here pretty soon because my eyes are starting to shut down. And uh, it's hard to swath with no eyes. So it's hard to swath with eyes as it is. So I think that'll be all for tonight. We'll continue this on tomorrow. Actually, we're supposed to get some rain tonight and tomorrow. So it depends how much I can keep swathing if it's not too much. You can swath canola while it's raining. It doesn't really bother it too much unless it's like pouring out. But if it's just a short little rain on and off, it doesn't really bother it.
gonna say this uh, Macdon's got pretty good lights. Anyway, that'll be all for tonight. And uh, I'm going to bed. Well, we're back at her today. This is actually the day after yesterday. <laughs> uh, the day I was filming, I was swatting way over there. And yesterday, and then it rained. And I came out and swat later on in the day. And uh, then it rained again. And it was pretty wet. But I, uh, I swat for the majority of it. So I'm noticing in the camera that the canola looks greener than it actually looks. Because the way I'm looking at it now, and I'm looking at it in my camera, it's way greener in my camera. So it's a little bit more ripe than what it looks like. But I kind of would be cutting it a little bit riper if I could, but I'm not waiting anymore. We've already had uh, one night with uh, plus one and zero, which is almost freezing. And there's another frost advisory tonight. It's supposed to clear out and get cold tonight. So usually you want your canola cut about three days before a frost. But I don't know. We'll see what uh, we'll see what the weather says tonight. But I only got that much more to go and I should be finished this. Oh, that's probably about four hours. Should have her.
So I forgot to make an ending for my sloth and canola video. But uh, I'm here out in one, my field here, which is total complete garbage. Uh, it totally drowned here. Like not just in the low spots, but everywhere. Um, that field that I was cutting in in this video, uh, if you remember in the spring on the burning stubble video, I burnt all the stubble there and I thinking now but who knows what the year is going to be like but I kind of wish I would have burnt all this stubble too. This field had tons of wheat straw in it. Lots. And I worked it in and it was still pretty damp this spring. I worked it in to try and dry it out because it was just too dry. And I thinking, thinking now if I would have burnt it it, Suki, it's okay, it's just me. Uh, thinking now if I would have burnt it, this crop would have been way better. But as you can see, the swaths are pretty pitiful. Not much of a canola swath compared to the other field. So, yeah. I got half of my canolas like this, the other half is good. So that's, uh, that's how the year's been in. It's funny now, now we're too dry. We haven't had... Uh, uh, Geez, we haven't had any significant rain since we started haying, which was in July. What is mid-July? Somewhere around there. Yeah, that's right when it stopped raining. And, uh, well, there's a little bit. Well, that's pretty dry. You dig down, there's moisture. About three, two inches down. But uh, that stuff is getting pretty crunchy already. Won't be long. I'll have to go, uh, get my combines. They're at the south farm still. Well, I've got one TR-96 here. Anyway, so just ending off this video. Um, that's just to show you the comparison of the canola. Alright, so thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and click like for the video if you can. And I'm going to go scare Suki. Oh, i got to go see if they have any popcorn here. I need some popcorn.